Okay, this is going to be explanations of the, uh, the first orange stripe for the jiu-jitsu. The first technique is called the peel away. So the first thing you do is, is you straighten your fingers, you keep your hands straight vertical up and down, you don't turn sideways. If you turn sideways and pull, if he's got a, 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 and he doesn't let go of your hand, you can break your own fingers. So just like the bricks are strong up and down, you want your hand to stay up and down. You reach in, grab, and you're going to pull up against the thumb. Always the weakness of the grip is in the thumb. I pull back with the same side leg that I'm being grabbed. Think of this logically. If I'm going to pull my hand back, I have to pull my shoulder back first. And the only way I can do that is by stepping back with that leg. If I step, some people make the mistake of stepping like this. That doesn't bring the shoulder back. So whenever he's grabbing you, if we have a, a, a technique that's going to be a pullout, you have to pull out with the same side leg as the hand that's being grabbed. So this shoulder pulls and pulls the, the hand out. So you're gripping both. And that's the, that's the uh, appeal away release, number one. The V clamp escape uh, is number two. So you're going to, your opposite hand, you make a V with your two forefingers, lock over the wrist, and your thumb covers their thumb, and, put, and you squeeze your finger and hand together, and then you release your hand. You don't necessarily have to step back on this because once the thumb collapses, your hand releases. So that's the V-clamp escape. Both your thumb and your finger. Some people think just the thumb is pushing, but the fingers are, are also pulling in. And that's number two. Okay, again, we're going to hit above the elbow right here. We drive down, and at the same time, we pull back. Always with the same side as the hands being grabbed, so your shoulder pulls your hand away from the person. Yes, okay. Right. okay, same side elbow grab. This is called a uh, elbow fold and escape. Now, this is a new uh, uh, concept that you may not be familiar with. This is called key hand. And what you're doing is you're energizing your arm by expanding your hand and focusing on projecting your, 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 your thoughts past where your hand is so that you put more power in your arm. Now, again, the weakness is right here where the thumb is. I'm going to step in towards her, but just to the outside of her leg, and then I snap my arm in. Notice my arm is in front of my body. It's not here. If I, if I do this, this is pulling. Now, he may be strong enough on the street to move with you if you pull. So you're not going to break loose by pulling. When we step in, we lock the body, they can't move forward, and we snap. You want your arm to be the same parallel to their arm. You don't want it to be here like this. That's pulling. So again, key hand, make your arm strong, and then you step in and snap. And again, you see how my arm is parallel to her arm. My elbow is where her elbow is. Okay. So that's elbow fold and escape. Okay, Again, we're going to use the key hand. Now we're going to start with a misdirection. Small circle release, sir. Small circle release. So we're going to start with a misdirection. So when I start out, he's going to pull in. He's trying to control me. So he pulls in, makes my his power is added to my, my, my technique. I step in, that, that gets my shoulder into this, and I drive down. So I start out, and then I go in the direction I want to go. Again, key hand, I keep the key all the way through. A lot of people go like this, and they go like this. They lose their key. So I start out, he pushes in, and then I step in when I feel the counter pressure. Okay, demonstrate. Okay, good. Okay. All right, so that's small circle release from our same side wrist. The next one is a uh, called a uh, hand thrust escape from a cross wrist hand. So we'll show this one from two different angles. So it's a cross wrist grab. I key. I'm going to start with a counter motion. I pull this way because I want to go this way. She pulls. I turn and I drive up. So I pull this way. I turn. I drive my hand up. I turn and drive down, and that releases the grip. 
Very important here is how you step. When I turn, this squares my shoulders and make, gives my arm more strength to lift. If I stay turned here and I go like this and she's very strong, I just have arm power. Now she's pushing down real hard right now and it makes it hard for me to lift my arm. But watch what happens when I turn my chest. All of a sudden my chest muscles add to the strength of the arm and I can lift up. I step, I turn, and I push down. The stepping motion on this is very important. If we use this line as a reference point, when I step, I turn, I, I move my foot out, and I turn both of my feet. See how my feet pivot? I turn both of my feet. Now, at the same time, I'm bringing my hand up. When I get about almost to the top of the circle in front of me, I step back on the line, and as I come through, watch my feet, I step out and down. So it's actually like a three-step motion. One, two, three. And it's all coordinated with the big circle. One, two, three. Okay, then Now, we start with the key hand misdirection. I want to go this way, but what I want to do is I want to start here. I pull in, she pulls the opposite way, and I reach up and grab her wrist. So, I'm circling to the outside of her wrist and grabbing it. I continue to rotation, break her wrist, break her grab, and then I come up with the opposite hand with my thumb on the outside of her, her hand, and my fingers all go into her palm. My other hand doesn't lose control of her arm. I keep pressing against it as I rotate my hand to the inside. So all of my fingers are in her palm, even the little fingers. And then my thumbs are on the back of her hand, below her knuckles. That's the hard part of the hand. Now what I want to do is I want to rotate my thumb, push forward and towards her elbow, and pull my fingers in. When she feels pain, then she taps and I let go so I don't injure her. Okay. Now, there is a big difference in the size of our hands. Because a lot of people, when they're working with smaller people, they say, I can't get my fingers in there. I can't get my fingers in there. Well, you, you can get your fingers in there. You have to squeeze them in. See the difference in the size of my hand left to hers? But I can get all of my fingers in there. And then, like I say, the thumb goes to the back of her hand, below the knuckles. If you push up above the knuckles, then you get this kind of effect. You can't push against her, her hand to get the wrist lock. Counter motion, circle, grab. Keep it low. If you keep it high, you don't have the right angle to get the, the wrist lock. The lower you have it, now the angle of the wrist is even more severe and it's easier to apply the lock. From the, uh, up double arm grab, we call it. Up Top. double arm grab. Okay? Now again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with a counter motion. So I, I wanna come in is where I wanna go. But if he's, the person is big and strong, they could prevent me from doing that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press out, they push in, and I lock my hands together in a clasp. Never in a uh, lacing. Because if I lace my fingers and she jerks my arms apart, she could break my fingers. So I wanna enter, I wanna clasp. And then I step back and I bend my hands forward and I just bring them straight down to my side. I don't want to go like this. So bring it down to the side. Okay, I'm demonstrate. Okay, see again the motion. Out. Good, excuse me. Okay. A double down wrist grab. The guy grabs you like this. Now, similar to the single grab, release, hold, you drive and your shoulder drops a little bit, that brings your hand lower than her arm can go. But when we have two, two arms being grabbed, I can't, hold on please. When I do this, I can't bring my arms over her, her wrist to go to release if I just stand here. So watch what I do, I go, I drop my weight. See how that brings my arms a lot lower? So I key, and again, you want to start with misdirection. I go out, she pushes in, and then I drop, and I release. Okay, can you stop for a second?
next from a, uh, uh, a collar grab. Now we don't have our keys on, but still we're, we're going to grab here. Now you're going to reach in over the top with, with your opposite hand and get into the meat of the hand. This is called the meat, the handle, the fat part of the, of the hand. So I'm going to reach over the top with my fingers and, and get in there real, real tight. I'm going to bring my elbow down and lock down. I want to keep her hand against my chest. And I'm going to step back and rotate her hand over. Now we're going to do it the other way so you can see. So she grabs with this hand. Again, I reach over to my opposite hand, reach into the meat. I'm going to lock her, her hand against my chest. If I just try to turn her over, she's a, a strong person. I can't turn her arm over. She's too strong. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to use my body strength, my shoulders, my chest to actually turn her arm over. So I reach in here and I pin my arm down. If I don't do that, if I keep my elbow up, she can pull her hand away real fast. Okay? So again, now I want to keep her arm on me. As I turn, watch her hand. I turn my shoulder and see how her hand turned over. Okay? Now you're still using some of your, some hand power too. So I'm here, as I turn, I turn my chest and I, then I pull her hand away. And I, I engage my other hand and I do the lock. The next one is from a, a front choke. Okay. You're going to raise your arm up. And remember again, remember, we're just doing releases. If you feel this is a serious situation, you can always kick, punch, strike. But we're just doing releases so we, we get away. We don't want to hurt the, our, the other person. So I'm going to raise my arm. I turn my body and I come down. I drop my weight and I drive my arm down on top of the arms. In class, you want to be careful you don't hit with the point on the arm because you're going to hurt the person. On the street or you're in, in self-defense, if you want to do that, that's fine. But here we hit with the tricep and we drive down. I drop my weight. I don't pull my arm like this. I keep it bent and I hit with my tricep as I drop my weight. Okay? You done the straight, please? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Go the opposite way. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, try not to hit the of your elbow, please. Ready, sir. All right, this is going to be an over under uh, arm release from uh, a front choke or a collar grab. Okay? So the person hands it like this. I'm going to reach either way. I'm going to start with the right hand. I reach over her arm. I rest my arm, my forearm, at the end of it by the elbow on her arm. I come underneath, I make a fist, I grab the fist, I push down on her arm, and I lift up against this arm, and I get to the vertical position. Then I twist my body away, I have to turn my feet. Whenever I turn my body, I have to turn my feet. A lot of times people try to turn their body, but they don't turn their feet. You, you won't get this powerful effect of turning your body as you turn your feet. So again, from this side, I come over, I'm going to rest on top of her arm, I push down and I lift up and I get to this position here, vertical position. Then I twist away. From that side, again, I go over, I'm going to rest on her arm, I come up and I twist. Okay. Now again, it's from a front shoulder. And it's a, it's a two finger thrust into the, uh, over the sternum, not the sternum, the, uh, the bony part at the bottom of the neck. So she's going to grab me in a choke. Now, people a lot of times have a tendency they want to go over. Now, if this is a tall person, you might not be able to get your hand over their arms. It's always better to go underneath. So you're, you're going to come underneath. You make two fingers, and then you're going to go find that bony part here in that front of the neck, and then you push down and away, and then as you straighten your arm, you push up. So it's, it, the motion is like this. So as my arm gets almost straight, that last little bit, I push up underneath the, that part of the neck. So I'm here, I push down and away, and then up as I get to that last little bit. 